Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. It's a delight to be with you, and thank you for joining us. My Bible is sending open to Leviticus chapter 24. Can you right now reach over and get your own copy of God's Word? I would love for you to do that if it's at all possible. If you cannot, we will read the passage before us, beginning at verse 17 here in just a moment. I've got a good outline for the segment of verses, and I want you to jot some notes, not simply because of the outline, but this passage brings up some issues that are impacting our own day. Please, please be listening today. I have a gospel tract in my hand. Uh, Do you know what a gospel tract is? That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation from sin. We need to be letting people know how to be saved from their sin. I often advertise this particular track as a ladies' track because the title of it is Coupon Faith. Uh, The word coupon and the word faith with a question mark after it. You ladies love your coupons. Oh, yes, there are men, a lot of men that do use coupons, but as a, well, looking at people groups, men versus women, you women seem to have a, a great love for coupons. Well, if you understand how a coupon works, then you will understand the gospel. And that's exactly what this tract is all about. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. But let me prepare us for our study time this way. You do not need to be very plugged in to the nightly news broadcast to know that there are some major hot topic issues that are being debated in our day. Two of these issues are racial issues between races and also animal rights. Now, one problem or our problem, maybe a better word, is the uh, one blight on our American history when it comes to the issue of racial inequality is how that one looms large in our history. The end of the Civil War certainly did not end the problem of racial inequality. But in the last 40 years, the other issue of animal rights has certainly come a long way as well. Some people want to give animals the certain rights which heretofore have only been granted to human beings. Now, let me say that true and honest believers in Jesus Christ have not always been on the correct side of these kind of issues and other issues as well, because either we do not know what the Bible says or we have been interpreting the Bible through the lens of our own personal prejudice. Leviticus 24 ends with verses that that speak to the issues of race injustice and animal rights. These verses are not lost, and we're not lost on our founding fathers of our nation. If you can, join me, please. Leviticus chapter 24. Now, friend, at the end of this program, my announcer is going to make known to you our our mailing address, our phone number, our website, and so on. Please have pen and paper ready. Jot down one of those methods and give us, please, your name and your mailing address. I want to send you a free gift of a sample packet, which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracks. I want to be a partner with you and you with me in seeing more people hear about the Lord Jesus Christ and his uh, atoning death at Calvary. This gospel tract in my hand, Coupon Faith, based upon the premise that so many people can put their faith in a coupon, a coupon based upon a particular company. They don't know where the company's headquarters is. They don't know the CEO of the company. They don't know the financial underpinnings of the company. But if that company puts out a coupon, they trust the coupon will do exactly what it says it will do. 
Oh, I wish people would put that much trust in the Word of God, that much trust in the person of Jesus Christ. That's the basis here that what it means to put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you know what it means to put faith in a coupon, then you're well on your way to understanding putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're looking for an eye-catching track that'll clearly explain the gospel, here's one for you, Coupon Faith. Get it from us. It's in that sample packet. If you cannot hang on to the end of the broadcast, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, let me begin Leviticus 24 at verse 17. Look along and read along in your Bible. Here's what the Bible says. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. And he that killeth a beast shall make it good beast for beast. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he hath caused a blemish in a man, it shall be done to him again. And he that killeth a beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. Ye shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own countrymen. For I am the Lord your God. I'm going to stop reading right there, please. Now, these verses are the fourth section, fourth part here of the 24th chapter. My title for this set of verses, 17 to 22, is this, Lessons on Liability. Lessons on Liability. Now, I need to make sure that people know what that word means. We do have some younger folk, some children that listen to the broadcast. We also have people in other nations that listen to the broadcast. For their benefit, let me explain the word liability. The word liability basically talks about responsibility. For example, if I'm driving my car and I hit your mailbox or hit one of your trees and damage the mailbox, damage your tree there on your property, if I do that, I am liable, I am responsible for the damages. Here, though, in chapter 24, we're not dealing with issues about driving your car. We're dealing with issues about murdering a person or killing a farm animal or causing bodily harm to a person or an animal. Now, I'm going to be using three words, all beginning with the letter D, like in the word donkey today, to form my outline. Are you ready? Here's number one. Based upon verses 17 and 18, my word is death, death. What am I liable for or responsible for when I cause a death? Verse 17 deals with the death of a human being, and verse 18 deals with the death of an animal. Now, the animal here obviously refers to a domesticated animal, an animal by which its owner could make a living. I'm talking about animals like cows and sheep and oxen and things like that. If a person was killed, if I killed a person, it must be determined whether or not it was an accident or if, whether I did it deliberately. Killing a human being deliberately or even in the heat of the moment means that I'm a murderer and I must die. I must forfeit my life. If I kill an animal, then restitution was required. An ox would need to be given to the owner whose ox I killed, or money could be given to the owner by me to the man who lost the ox, whose ox was killed, so he could go buy a new ox. Now, please, please note that there's a clear distinction made here between a person and an animal. Different liability standards are set between animals and people because they're not equal in God's eyes. People are made in the image of God. Animals are not. This brings me to my second D word, which is the word damage, based upon verses 19 and 20. What am I liable for when I damage a person or an animal? I didn't kill them, but I damaged them. I did some permanent damage. Now, this is where you're going to find that phrase, that well-known phrase, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You need to know this. If a person in the Jewish culture was permanently damaged, like the loss of an eye or something like that, that person was forever excluded from being at the tabernacle. They could not be part of corporate worship there. So damaging a person was serious business. So whatever you did to hurt them, the same hurt 
and only the same level of hurt was to be done to you. That's the restraint of the eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You could not go beyond what you had happened to you. All right, we've had the word death. We've had the word damage. I now come to my third word based upon verses 21 and 22. The word is distinction. Distinction. Were the laws in these matters different for the Jews in contrast to non-Jewish people? Was there a distinction seen between Jew and Gentile, between fair-skinned people and dark-skinned people, or whatever you want to do there? The answer is no, emphatically no. Verse 22 is very clear when it says, and I'm quoting now, he shall have one manner of law as well as for the stranger, as for one of your own countrymen. But that is is not the end of the verse, dear listener friend. The end of the verse goes on to say this, and I'm reading now, for or because I am the Lord your God. Now, beloved, if we own the God of the Bible as our God, we say that we follow the God of the Bible, then we do not get to have a vote. We don't get a voice in the matter here. Our God has set the standard. To borrow a picture, well, let me say this. Lady Justice really is a blinded being when dealing in legal matters. That's why we have the statue with the blinded lady. Before the court, there is no distinction of race, of nationality, of religion, and so on. To borrow, again, a phrase, all are created equal because all are made, all people are made in the image of God. Why? Well, let me just remind you of what we all know over in the book of Acts in chapter 17. There the apostle Paul is preaching the gospel to people who are worshiping there uh, all these various gods, and he finds there a an idol addressed to the unknown God, and the people there are worshiping this unknown God just in case they forgot to get all the gods in there. They didn't want to slight any god, even if they did not know about the god and so on. Well, in that great sermon, the apostle Paul says this, that God has, I'm quoting now, made of one blood, one blood, one blood, all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Dear beloved, all people, no matter their nationality, no matter the uh, skin color, no matter the, uh, the condition and the slant of the eye or non-slant of the eye or whatever other physical trait you may want to uh, bring up to me, all people are made of one blood. We all are the children of Adam. To put it even more succinctly, we all came from uh, the man called Noah and his wife, because of the flood, Noah's family populated the earth. Dear friend, there is no difference, there's no distinction between people in the sight of God. Now, that passage there goes on to say in Acts that they, all people, are to, supposed to seek God. God put the same conscience in all people. Dear listening friend, are you seeking God? You're looking for uh, the God who can cleanse your soul from sin? His name is Jesus. He's the Christ, the Son of God. Receive him today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.